Banjo Holics, how are you doing? And today I'm gonna show you or play whatever um, uh, Beam Rider. Um, and Beam Rider is uh, kind of like um, uh, the uh, the hero game that I showed you the other time. Um, it was made by Activision for the 2600 and the Coleco Vision and then ported to different platforms. Um, actually, I could be totally wrong on that. I never checked it. Um, I, I just assume it was, but um, I don't really care because I played on the MSX and it's an awesome game. And first, let me tell you, this is the intro screen from Beam Rider. And when you see that 3D effect uh, checkerboard thing just coming at you on your home machine, in 1983 man it's it's it just this is the future this is tron this is everything you've dreamt up of as a kid it, it was just so freaking high tech for me uh, just to see that and experience that so this game was just it was so fucking huge man uh, and i played it again and again um on the uh, on the MSX and uh, I'll, sh I'll show you the gameplay it's it's a really cool game um, again you press one to um, start playing uh, you can select which starting level you want um, we'll just start with one because I haven't played it first and look at this this was the intro like that's how the game starts like an emergency um, you got these gates like opening you can see the background you know straight away you're in the ship you know it was just so really cool like <laughs> and this brings back memory. So you can only move uh, on those five lines here, and you press the uh, space bar to shoot. And uh, he, yeah, if you press up, you got this uh, torpedo thing. I just I love that lasso sort of. And uh, that's this is the first level. Like you got a certain amount of uh, enemy ships that you have to kill. That uh, green number on the top <coughs> left uh, lets you know how many enemies you still have to shoot. Oh man. And can you hear the sound effects? That bass hum. Man, if that doesn't put you under pressure. Oh yeah, and uh, that's what your torpedoes are for. It's for getting the mothership at the end. But everything in this game had this kind of sense of just urgency and, and tension, and uh, and and it it became very uh, uh, frantic. Uh, the pace became very frantic near the, uh, the the high levels. Probably actually probably at level three or four or something like that. And each level introduces a new type of enemy. Um, so these red ones, I think, are just... I don't know, because I don't have the manual, but they look like the white ones, but just destroyed and rusty. And uh, So I think they're just... Uh, uh, wrecks of, uh, of other ships. I'm not exactly sure what's what here. I I, I never had the box, unfortunately, um, as a kid. And you can't shoot these. Um you can't shoot these green stars coming down at you, so. Uh Man, that used to make, make me trip, just that that alarm sound. Really, really cool. Uh, and here you can't do anything if you press up, down, uh, down, or spacebar, right or left. You have to press up uh, to start the level. What a way to start that. I love those sounds. And that hum, background hum, gets... And those sounds are so cool. Whoa! I love the sound when you when you hit one of those red. Uh, like you don't need really a manual. The game kind of tells you everything you want to know. 
just with the, uh, the 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 sound. Yeah, so that hum gets higher and higher pitched every every uh, level. Um, and you can see it's not exactly easy, like. Uh, and the fact that you can only be on one of these lines at. A, you know, you can't be uh, in between, really. That's only level 4, man. Oh. I'm stressed already. <laughs> See that hum? You don't want to be pushed in the corner. Um, it's pretty much how you die. It's being uh, being pushed in the corner like that and not being able to. Uh, those stars will actually come exactly to the where you are, you know, which line you are on. So you kind of want to um, bait them there and then and then get the mothership like that. Um, you can hear it, can you? That sound that tells you you're fucked, regardless. Like you know. Again, I'm playing on an emulator and a keyboard. Um, now, this game I have on cart uh, f by uh, was it Kuwait or Iraq or I I'm not sure, but uh, a company called uh, oh my fuck um, Sh Shak Shakra Al Alamia or something like that. Uh, please excuse my pronunciation. I, I just do not know, but it's it was. Um, uh, um, Middle East uh, company that actually uh, uh, made uh, MSX. They're pretty rare, uh, in fact, and uh, quite the collector items. Uh, and it's just cool to to see a uh, Arabic letters on the on the computer machine. But uh, but um, so my version is is uh, is by them, and I have River Aid. As well by by um uh, Alam Alamia, sorry, I don't mean to offend you. It's just I don't know how to pronounce it. <clears throat> and uh, you can also find them on tape, much cheaper if you can bear the loading time, or you can do what I'm doing right now, which is emulate. Um, again, this is a game you just need all your concentration, and I'm talking, and I shouldn't be talking. But <laughs> I'm not trying to go very far. I'm just trying to show you, really. Uh, in fact, I'm actually I've actually gone uh, like Hero. I haven't played this game in about twenty years, uh, probably more. So um, you, I'm actually doing a lot better than I thought I would. I'm remembering patterns. And uh, trust me, you'll need reflexes on this. How many lives have I got? Just a tree, I think. <clears throat> uh, and when you see this video, I'll probably actually be gone uh, to the uh, yeah the USA for the uh, retroware convention. So uh, I probably won't be able to reply to your comments if there is any. <laughs> straight away. There might not be any. Um, oh! <laughs> now that's a new one. Wow! Might not be a good idea to emulate after all. Um, 
I'll tell you what, uh, th- that wasn't good on the ears, not, uh, especially not with the helmet. So that was Beam Rider. <laughs> uh, now those of you who had a uh, Coleco Vision or a, um, uh, an Atari 2600 uh, might be familiar with it and might have played that as well. Um, it's a really, really cool game and it's, it's, it's one of those games you don't hear about very often. I mean, it seems the retro scene has gone all either Nintendo or JRPGs. I, I had a big rant on Twitter and Facebook about that, but not a big rant, but uh, yeah, a few comments I made. But uh, <coughs> whereas uh, th- this is what I would consider a retro gaming, really, I suppose. Um, having, having not just only gr- been brought up around that time, but being from a, a period of time where th- th- one day there was nothing and then the next day there was a Pong console. And then there was this, that kind of stuff. Uh, so having experienced all that, with 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 conscious, uh, uh, conscient um, uh, memory, uh, it's it's quite something. So um, that's what I consider retro retro gaming, really. But I mean, one man's idea of retro gaming is is another one's idea of next gen. So I'm not trying to pass any comments on. I mean, if you if your first console was the uh, N64, that's just the way it is, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with that either. So, uh, there you go, Beam Rider, I don't know what, what that was there, but, um, Beam Rider, <laughs> give it a try again, um, I, I don't know if MSX Abandonware has it, um, probably because there's not much to emulate, I'd say, um, otherwise, um, yeah, I'm sure it's, you can find it easily on the 2600 or the uh, ColecoVision or just emulate it, which is what I'm doing here, even though I have a copy. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.